Thank you for joining us for this episode of MTI's Whiteboard Wednesdays. I'm Dan Adams. Today we're talking about upset control for rotary friction welding, part two. In the last episode, we talked about how upset is the amount of shortening of a part resulting from friction welding. And that if we had perfect incoming parts, we could fix the amount of energy that we use to make that weld and get very repeatable upset. However, incoming part variations such as area differences, surface conditions, material differences, or even interface squareness can cause subtle variations in upset. So if we changed our control technique in direct drive friction welding, and instead of holding our rotation, which is the energy input phase, for a specific amount of time, we can hold that rotation until we get a specific amount of upset. So now if I have area differences, for example, my larger part will spend more time rotating creating more heat in order to get the same amount of upset. So I'm putting more energy in, I'm allowing the energy to vary to overcome any incoming part variations that we might have. Now as a result of that varying energy, I will get slight variations in the amount of upset that I get in the forge phase. And I can also get variations as a result of the breaking phase. So I'm closed loop on upset control up until the point where I go into the breaking phase. And once I enter the forge phase, I'm now still in open loop and I have a little bit of variation. Now I'm still not controlling the overall length of the part, but I am getting better upset repeatability in spite of any incoming part variations that I might have. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Whiteboard Wednesdays. For more information on rotary friction welding or other friction welding solutions, please visit our website at mtiwelding.com.